everyone! Welcome to the Lori Whitlock YouTube channel today. In this video we're going to put together this adorable large haunted house for Halloween. So uh, this is a fun project. It measures about 11 inches tall by 9 inches wide by 5 inches deep. And I'll give you a good view of it from all the different angles. You can purchase the cutting files at the Silhouette Design Store if you're a Silhouette user. You can also purchase the SVG cutting file over at shop.lauriewhitlock.com in my SVG shop. So I think this project is so much fun. It'd make a great centerpiece or home decor item um, vocal piece for the holiday coming up. So um, let me tell you a little bit about the papers that I've used. I've used a solid black cardstock that's probably about an 80 pound cover for the roof and the um, fence and all the window casings and the bottom and the tree and I have used for the solid orange it's a double-sided card stock from um, an Echo Park paper collection called Halloween Party it's this sheet right here it's orange on one side and it's black on the other so when you look inside the windows you can see that it's black inside for this sheet right in here it's a Harlequin pattern on the outside and on the inside you can see the cute little witch hats poking through and it is this pattern right here in my Halloween magic collection that I've designed for Echo Park that is new for the, um, the fall of 2021 should be shipping and in stores now but I absolutely love this collection it's so so cute it's got darling little characters in it and little pumpkins and hats and just lots of cute embellishments. It'd be a lot of fun to add to this cute haunted house. And I am planning to make more haunted houses. So if you purchase this collection, you'll have all these cute little stickers you could work with to embellish your haunted house with if you wanted to. So that's Halloween magic. It also comes in a six by six paper pad and the cutest little stamps. So if you're into stamping, um, you could stamp these little characters, color them, and add them to the haunted house as well. So much fun. Um, this collection also comes with some dies that are metal dies. If you're um, into metal die cutting, you can purchase these as well to embellish with. But uh, since you are using this digital cutter to create this project, it's likely you'll want to use the embellishments that come right inside the file. So I've included a cute ghost, a little cobweb that fits right up here in this peak and we've got a bat, a little gravestone, and a jack-o'-lantern. And of course we've got a cute little tree cut in black as well. So they have these cute little outbuildings that pop out on the sides and on the front we have this tall tower and the front door and a couple of chimneys. So I think this is a really great project. It's super easy to put together. I have labeled the pieces inside the file so they'll be easy to identify and it's quite easy to put together. So let's get started with our project. So let's get started putting the basic house pieces together. I'm gonna to start with the orange pieces that you'll see in the file. Um, you should have two large pieces that look like this, one that has windows and one that doesn't. And then you've got some smaller pieces that look like this. They're little dormer pieces that stick off from the outside of the house. And then this larger one here. And I've gone ahead and glued the window casings on and I've glued the little uh, spider web here in the top of that front dormer. And you can see that that um, window casing just glues right over that hole. There should be just a little bit um, of overlap so that you won't see the orange through on the front. So I just used some liquid glue and put a little bit of glue around the edges and just glued those right on. They're all dry now and we're ready to start assembling the rest of the house. So. Um, let's just go ahead and I'm going to take this piece right here and all, of th all four of these pieces actually assemble in the same way, but you're basically just going to fold those score lines all in one direction to form this little box. And then these top pieces are going to glue down to form the roof. So let's just, um, now that I've already folded those, you just make, want to make sure you use a bone folder to get a nice crease on each of those fold lines. That'll make sure that all your corners are nice and square. And then we'll go ahead and run some adhesive down this one glue tab here on the side. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fold that over right on top of that and press that down good. 
Um, one thing I did change after cutting this out, I didn't want to recut it all out, but I did add some little tabs here at the bottom to kind of finish off that bottom so you can glue it onto the base when we're all done. Kind of like I did here on this main house piece. Those bottom glue tabs will glue down to the house base. And these will also have some tabs so you'll have something to glue down. So now that we have that side piece done, let's go ahead and put some adhesive on these in fact, I think I'll use liquid adhesive because they're a little bit tricky to get to at this point. So I'll go ahead and tuck those in and just glue those down. And then same thing on this piece. Let's tuck those in and put that little glue tab in and you can get your bone folder up in there if you need to to hold everything in place while it's gluing and that looks great so we'll just go ahead and let that one dry and um, I'll show you this process one more time on this large piece like I said the process is the same on all of all four of these pieces Well, it looks like I'm going to run out of adhesive right there, so we'll just finish that up with some liquid. And we'll just fold that over and onto itself. And then we're just going to tuck those in at the top and glue them in. Just like like we did on the one before, just like that. And if you wanted to add some vellum behind the windows, you could, but I actually thought they were kind of cool. And I really liked this double-sided Harlequin paper um, with the cute little witch hats showing through on the inside. Um, this is from my um, Halloween Magic collection that I was releasing just this year in 2021 with Echo Park Paper Company. Okay, this one's going to be a little harder to reach up in there, but if you have something long, like a ruler, um, that might help out just a little bit. Put a little pressure on that. Help push those glue tabs down, and this side I can't reach in there, so I think that it, everything got good contact. You can always tuck a little more glue in here with your needle nose glue bottle if needed and then just hold that till it dries really well okay and then go ahead and complete that process for the last two pieces okay now that we've put all of those pieces together let's go ahead and put the main house piece together and um, we're just going to connect that here at this side glue tab so we'll go ahead and put some adhesive on that side tab And then we have to glue up these two sides here to the to form this side of the, the roof line there. And then we have to glue this side tab here as well. So you can decide what order you'd like to do that in. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and glue this side down while I can use the table to help me get it nice and square. And I'm just going to fold that back the other way, make sure everything is nice and square. Hopefully I got enough glue on that seam. Looks like I could use just a little bit more in there, right here. Okay, now that that's glued, let's, let's go ahead. These bottom tabs can just fold in. They're gonna glue to the base when we're all done. We don't need to worry about them right now. Um, but right now, let's just go ahead and get these sides pulled in. And then we do have that top seam to glue as well. So let's do the sides first. Actually, before I put this second side in, I'm going to go ahead and put glue across this top seam. Probably be easier to get it in there right now. And 
And I'm going to use the table here to help me out just a little bit while I glue that top of the house in place. And then we still have the side seams on this side. I'm going to reach in there and grab that triangle out. And go ahead and put some adhesive here on these side tabs. I'm just going to use the table again to help me out. I push on those with the bone folder. Make sure you clean up any excess glue and try not to make too big of a mess. Or this is a haunted house though, it might just add a little character. Okay, that top still isn't completely glued, so I'm going to add a little more adhesive in there. Okay, once that is done, this is the front of our house. And we're going to add this large dormer piece to right to the middle of our house. Um, we also have our roof line. Let's see, here's our roof. And this is going to fit right around that dormer when we're done, just like that. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and glue on the roof first and then we'll add this piece in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just coat that whole top. Both sides with glue. And then we want to center this and make sure that that notch is on the front of the house with the windows, not on the back. That's super important. And then you just want to center it really well, side to side. And I'm using that table to hold it down nice and tight. Okay, once you have that roof on there, we'll go ahead and glue this on and that'll show us exactly where to place it. So we're just going to put adhesive right down through this section right here. You want to be sure to get it all the way to the edges. We want to hold that on really well. Okay, so just make that flush at the bottom here. You don't want it to hang over the edge. And then you're going to need to get some pressure in there to give it a good press. I'm just going to go ahead and flip it over and use the table to give it some pressure. And now that we have that glued in place, you'll notice that we have three of these little guys and one of them's a little taller and a little thinner. And that is our front door. And that's going to glue right to the front of this dormer piece that we just put on. So let's go ahead and put adhesive all over the back of this small one. The other two are matching sizes and they're going to go on the sides of the house over here. Okay, so we'll just line that up right in the middle and glue that down. And again, I think I'm going to flip this all over to help me give it a little pressure. And once that's dry, we'll go ahead and turn that over. And we'll go ahead and add our two side pieces here, one on each side. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do them that way. I kind of like the way that looks better. So I'm just going to turn the whole house on its side and we're going to put adhesive on the back of this little dormer outbuilding. And we'll just flip that over and center it on the side of our house. it over to the other side and do the same thing over here. Putting a little pressure with this hand over here while I'm adding glue to this piece over here. 
little bit hard to do both at once, but that's probably good. Okay, so our house is coming together nicely. We just need to add some little rooftops. So we'll grab the little rectangles that look like this. If you'll look closely, they have a score line in the middle. Okay, we've got three different sizes here. It looks like I'm missing one of my pieces. So I'll just show you how it works on one of the sides. Um, let's go up to this top piece here. That one's going to go there and the smallest one's going to go here. And then this thicker one goes on the sides and it looks like I need to cut one more of those. But we'll go ahead and glue on the three that we have right now. Okay, so this one goes up here. Just kind of center that in the space and glue that down, giving it some good pressure. And then we'll do this um, smaller front door area. So cute. Isn't it getting cute? I love it. Okay. It, and it's actually quite easy. It might look a little intimidating, but it's really quite easy to put this thing together. I've given you exactly the pieces that you need and um, everything in the file. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out. I'll have it labeled in the file so you can recognize all the pieces. Okay, so that's what the side should look like. And you would just go ahead and put the other, uh, it's a little bit fatter piece on these two sides. So these are a little bit skinnier, as you notice. This one's the smallest, this is the middle, and then these are a little bit fatter. Okay, so that's what we're looking like so far. So um, let's go ahead. We have a little railing to put up by the front window, top window here. Looks like this. It's got two glue tabs on the sides and we're just going to glue that right here to look like a little balcony railing. You can kind of train that to curve just a little bit and put some adhesive on those two tabs. And then we'll put that just right here and it's going to be a little tricky to hold. But you'll want to press those glue tabs down on the house, just below the window area there, a oh, little door. And just hold that till it's dry. Make sure it's straight. So, so cute. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the chimney pieces. We've got two chimneys that look like this. And you're just going to score, uh, fold on all those score lines all in one direction. And you've got two, two little glue tabs on the peak area here and glue tabs at the bottom. And then you're just going to fold it over and glue on that side glue tab to complete the square. Go ahead and hold that down let it dry. I'll do the same thing on the second one. Just be really careful. I almost folded in the wrong place on this one here. Just be careful to only get on those score lines. Don't fold at the peak. So once that's dry, um, you can just fold all those um, glue tabs in and put a little adhesive on those. And this is what's going to hold our chimney on top of our house. We're going to put them on either side. I'm going to flip that around so my seam doesn't show. 
either side of that front dormer. I put my hand up inside of the house to give it some pressure to hold it down. And then we'll do the same thing with the other one. Okay, that is how our house is looking so far. That's a little tweaked. Let's see if we can fix that before it dries too much. Okay, look how cute our house is getting now. So at this point, let's go ahead and glue this down to the base. This is what the base looks like. And it's just a little oversized for the house. And just kind of center that in this space. And we're going to add some embellishments. Like we've got some bats and ghosts and pumpkins and a tombstone. We've even got a tree. And I'm just going to kind of fold this to show you. It's going to sit in a corner like this right over in here. So you'll have six of these pieces to just fold in half and create a little tree that's going to sit over here. So we've also got a a little picket fence, spooky picket fence. We'll just fold on those tabs. And then it folds right down the middle. And so that can create our little picket fence on the corners. And you could actually tuck those glue tabs underneath the base if you'd like. Or on top, either one. May as well tuck them underneath so they don't show. And that's kind of how we'll finish it off. So before we add all the embellishments, though, I feel like we need to go ahead and glue our base down. Um, so let's, like I said, I'm going to add tabs to all these little pieces so you'll have more surface area to glue down. I've already done that to the file, but I didn't want to recut everything. So when you cut it, you'll have those. And then again, I'm just going to kind of center this the best I can on this base. So this is a really nice sized project, just to give you an idea. Well, we've kind of got it off to one side a little bit, don't we? Oh, let's scoot it this way just a little bit. Okay, that looks a little bit better to me. I'm not as worried about the back. I want plenty of space in the front to embellish, so that looks great. But just so you can see the, the width, um, this, car, this base is a little over eight and a half and about five inches this way. Um, the house itself is about seven and a half inches and the height all the way to the top is about 11 inches. So you can kind of see how big this is. I'm going to add a little, we just aren't getting a good, good um, stick on that base, so I'm going to go ahead and add some more glue, probably because I tried to move it, of course. That's okay. We'll try again. Okay, I'll just give that some good pressure. Okay, and then let's go ahead and work on these little picket fences. I've already folded this one, so I'm just going to put some adhesive on the top of it here. And that way I can tuck it underneath, like I mentioned, on the corner. Cute. You don't see any glue tabs or anything from the top, which looks great. And we'll do the same thing with the other piece. Folds right in half. Looks like we've got one little piece to clean out here. So if you had the Cameo Pro and you wanted to cut this haunted house even larger, you could certainly do that. Uh, the only limitation you'll have is the size of paper you're able to cut on. Um, the largest piece was this front tall dormer, and I believe that's about 11 and a half inches. So you will need a 12 by 12 for that. If you were to, you know, increase the size of that to cut on the Cameo Pro, you would just need paper that could accommodate that one large piece then everything else should fit on it just fine. Look how cute that's getting. Uh, let's go ahead and put together the other this tree. 
I'll just lay that on its side so you can see it while I'm doing this tree. So you're just going to take these six pieces and just fold them all in half. And they're all going to look just the same. And then we're just going to glue them to the neighbors. So you can see how I'm just gluing them um, together uh, to the neighbor. That way it'll stand up and make a nice 3D tree. So make sure you get glue all the way up into that top area and make sure the folds are all meeting in the middle. It works really well to use the table to get some good pressure on that to get the glue to stick. I'm just going to do that one half and then I'm going to do this other half next. You could really have a lot of fun with this house making different um, pieces out of different colors of cardstock. Um, like I mentioned, I did this front Dormer piece out of a Harlequin pattern, um, but you could do each of the little dormers out of different pattern papers. That'd be darling. I think you could also have a lot of fun decorating it for different occasions. Um, would not have to be a haunted house. It could be spring or Christmas or um, whatever you want it to be. It could be um, just depending on the colors that you pick. And I'm obviously inclu including all of the Halloween embellishments but you could embellish it any way you would like. You could add additional embellishments. I think it'd be fun to use some of my Halloween magic characters from the paper collection. There's a stamp set in there that would be darling to add the little characters uh, to the house by the front door or whatever. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the two halves and just glue those together. Well, let's see, let's just do that section and then we'll pull this around do this section. So that's how our tree is going to look when we're done. And that will be Darling glued right in here in the corner. I'm going to stand it up to do that. So to do that, I'm, you could use hot glue. That would work really well. Um, or you can just use your liquid adhesive. And you wouldn't even have to glue it in if you'd rather just set it in there. That would work too. And then you kind of just nestle that in on the corner of the house and hold down on that while it glues. Okay, I'm gonna just let it sit there for a minute. And then we've got other embellishments like the cute little uh, tombstone. We can just play around with where we want those to be. I'll flip this up so you can see. Tombstone, jack-o'-lantern, a little ghost could be coming out of a window or a door somewhere. And then we've got bats. I included some bats in the file too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish embellishing this cute house. I'm gonna go cut one more roof piece for the little dormer on this left-hand side. And um, we're done with our darling little haunted house. I hope you enjoy this cute haunted house. If you love it, please let me know and I will make more of these. Have a great day and I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.